All right, so today we're gonna to talk about learning motion graphics in Blender and kind of a roadmap that I created to maybe help you learn it this year. So what I did was I went through my entire channel and made a playlist kind of in chronological order from easy to medium to difficult of videos that I think you should watch um, one after the other that would really teach you a lot of really useful tricks if you wanna learn motion graphics. So when it comes to getting good at motion graphics, I think it's kind of cut in half. One half of it is the practical knowledge of how are we creating tools to create interesting scenes, interesting movement, and communicate the idea that my client might want me to do in terms of building things out. And that requires a lot of knowledge in Blender. But on the other side of it is how can we take all that stuff and actually make it look good? I honestly think the skill of making a system look good is more important than being really, really technically skilled. I found clients are happier when it looks good rather than if it looks the most intricate and big and extravagant. And so if you can kind of get good at both, you're gonna be a weapon. So with all of these tutorials, they teach you both of those things. How can we use Blender to build a cool thing? How can we make that thing look really cool? So with that being said, let's talk about some of these videos in this playlist. This first one is really gonna get you comfortable with the idea of using geometry nodes. Geometry nodes is the most powerful tool for making motion graphics in Blender, and you are gonna to wanna to get good at it, and this one is really gonna teach you, hey, motion graphics is not that complicated, and neither is geometry nodes. Both ideas can feel very daunting. This one's really gonna get you quite comfortable with some of these tools. Now, like I mentioned, making things look cool is almost more important than making cool things. And lighting is one of the biggest ways to make something look bad or good. And this video is gonna give you kind of an overview of some simple tricks that are gonna help your scenes look really good. Lighting doesn't have to be complicated, but if you can learn some really cool tricks along the way that are gonna make your life easier and make simple setups to make really cool scenes, it's really going to save you a lot of time and make you a better artist. Under the guise of manipulating lights, I have two tutorials. One that's very practical and using lights as the light is going through maybe some trees or a window. These are called gobos and it's gonna teach you how to create gobos to create more style in your scenes. And then the other tutorial is taking that idea and going a little bit more stylistically with it by taking lights and turning them into projectors that then we can project things on things and make really, really cool stylistic looking animations. This is one of those videos that crosses the line from, okay, we have a scene with a rock and a whatever, but let's make it look awesome. Let's do it with projectors. That one's gonna really help you think of creating style. Being a motion graphics artist, you are gonna be kind of a jack of all trades. And one of those trades is being an environment artist. And this tutorial is going to show you how we can make a very simple environment. There's not a lot of moving parts with this. It's just really using simple tools to create simple things and using simple materials and lighting, making it all cohesively come together to make a very satisfying animation. Physics can be really frustrating in Blender. Uh, and I wanted to make a tutorial where we take an idea that might be quite frustrating and showing you how to do it. We're gonna be using rigid body dynamics to make this really nice, fun animation where all these balls are going through and hitting and colliding and stuff. And it's really gonna help you understand how to use rigid body dynamics in a simple way. All the tutorials are meant to take difficult concepts and show you they actually are quite simple. And this is a perfect example of that. Understanding how to create procedural materials is a very, very necessary skill. You have to learn how to make patterns sometimes on other things. This tutorial is gonna show you how to make a relatively simple pattern within the procedural material node system, and then how can we use motion blur and setting up a scene to make this look like a really, really cool looping animation. The tutorial is less than 10 minutes and you're gonna get so much from it. Masking is kind of this idea of using patterns on top of patterns and cutting holes to create new patterns. This tutorial is going to show you how to do that in Blender and then we're gonna take that idea and make a really simple animation. This is one of those animations I use for, as like a simple website background or even going as far as a really, really effective concert visual. And then the last procedural material tutorial I would recommend is this one, it's actually a free lesson taken from my Intro to Motion Graphics course where we kind of go really far and use only procedural materials to make an entire landscape looking animation loop where everything is, is bouncing around and lights and color. And it's honestly one of my favorite animations I made in 2024 and it's super cool. It's also quite complicated. And once you get to this particular point in your learning, you'll really realize how far you can take procedural materials. We are talking about motion graphics and eventually you're going to need to deal with typography. So this tutorial is going to show you how we can use the text tool to make something look really, really cool. 
It's kind of a combination of using text, using modifiers, and using procedural materials all together to create a beautiful looking scene, and you're gonna walk away with some really, really valuable knowledge. Like I mentioned, Geometry Nodes is going to be your best friend with, when making motion graphics in Blender. This one's going to show you, hey, we don't have to use the default text tool in Blender. We can actually use one that's inside of Geometry Nodes so that we can use it to create even crazier type-based scenes. It's really gonna show you, hey, we can use text as geometry, make things look readable, and use it as a tool. And it's honestly one of my favorite videos I made last year. Dynamic paint is not something I use very often, but when I made this tutorial, I wanted to challenge myself to make a dynamic paint animation that also loops seamlessly. So this one is really a perfect intro to dynamic paint tutorial, but it's also on the back end gonna teach you a really cool problem solving skill on how to get that movement to loop seamlessly. And it's a really fun, really satisfying animation. Now I don't have a specific video for looping. That's because almost all of these tutorials incorporate looping the animation. For me, I'm obsessed with making an animation loop. I don't know why I love it so much, but I do. But I found that problem solving that issue of how can I get this movement to loop has actually taught me so much more about Blender and how the back end of things work. So as you're watching these tutorials, keep a mental note of all the different ways that we're taking movement and getting it to loop seamlessly. Now, most of the time, particle systems now are being built in geometry nodes, but still the native kind of original particle system is still useful to know. And this tutorial is gonna teach you how to create this optical illusion logo reveal using the particle system. It's very fun and it really helps you learn how to use that particle system in a really interesting, creative way. One of the most daunting things I've found that beginners dread is learning about math within Blender. You're seeing it a lot in the shader editor and in geometry nodes. This video is going to get you kind of warmed to the idea of using math and geometry nodes, and it's really not that scary. It's scary because it is pretty expansive, but there's a pretty dense portion of math that actually gets used most of the time, and I think everyone needs to at least know that. Things like divide, multiply, and add, and how all those things, just very simple, but open the door to really, really cool animations and creating cool systems. Math is definitely the portion of Blender that is separate from making things look cool, but actually building cool things that you can then make them look cool through lighting, through materials, through taste, and applying that with your art. So that's all the videos that I wanted to make note. The playlist has way more videos than I mentioned. And like I said, they're ordered from easiest all the way to most difficult. And I don't expect you to get through this playlist in just a month. Uh, this is something that I would say spend the year and just kind of chip at them and learn at. And, and I know you're gonna go on other tangents on YouTube and learn this and learn that and learn that. And I created this playlist for you to go back to when you're like, okay, I wanna refocus learn some of these things. This is a very good sprint of a playlist. It's very dense, it's very intimidating, and it's really cool. So that's how I would do it here in YouTube. Now, on top of this playlist, I also have a intro to motion graphics course, and it's quite different than this playlist because the playlist kind of jumps around. Even though it is easiest to most difficult, some of these tutorials have assumed knowledge because most of my audience is intermediate and they kind of know how to jump in. Again, even though it's chronological, it's not always the most intuitive because it is YouTube and YouTube can be kind of all over the place with tutorials in terms of what you're supposed to know, what you need to know, and all of that. This course is a step-by-step -step how we can go from being very beginner in motion graphics to learning some really cool tools and everything builds on top of each other. Each lesson, you're gonna walk away with a brand new animation and more knowledge than you left from the last one. So if you do wanna check out my Intro to Motion Graphics course, it is a perfect way to really kinda of go from zero to hero far quicker than you would on YouTube. But again, YouTube is free and we love free. So if you wanna check out either of those things, they are linked in the description. Thank you guys for watching and good luck on learning motion graphics.